The following is a presentation of the Canadian Centre for Diversity and Inclusion. All content presented is the exclusive intellectual property of CCDI. Any sharing, reproduction, or use of this material or content requires the express written permission of CCDI. Should you wish to use this content in any way, please contact Michael Bach, founder and CEO, via email at michael.bach at ccdi.ca. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. As it's now 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, I'll go ahead and get started. My name is Pam. I'm the Senior Coordinator of Learning at the Canadian Centre for Diversity and Inclusion, and I'm pleased to present to you today's webinar, which is the second of the CCIP Open House series. We'd like to thank our employer partners, individual practitioners, and those of you who have taken part in our webinars before. If you are new to CCDI, we hope this session provides you with a valuable learning experience. So first, we'd just like to start with a webinar disclaimer. The content presented reflects CCI's knowledge and experience, but does not constitute a recipe that can be applied equally to all organizations. The information contained in these webinars and related materials does not constitute rendering of legal, consulting, or other professional services or advice of any kind, and CCI is not liable for any claims, losses, or damages of any kind arising out of or in any way related to the information provided in these webinars. Now, some housekeeping notes. To ensure that you can hear the presentation, we have muted everyone's line. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to write them in the chat box. We encourage you to take notes throughout the webinar and ask questions. Although the presentation slide deck is not available for distribution, we are recording this session, uh, including the questions at the end. So employer partners of CCDI will have access to the recording as well as previous webinars in the Knowledge Repository available on our website. Now, a couple of points about the webinar platform itself. You'll notice in the top right side of the webinar screen, there is a full screen button circled in red there. It's the button with the four arrows. Feel free to click if you'd like to view the webinar in full screen mode. Right below, you'll also notice a question and answer chat box. This is where you can enter any of those questions or comments you may have. And only myself and our IT assistant can see your questions. We'll hold off answering questions until the end of the presentation, uh, and we'll explain the process involved with that. So with that, I'd like to begin. And for those of you who have joined us, once again, my name is Pam. I'm the Senior Coordinator of Learning at the Canadian Centre for Diversity and Inclusion, and I'm pleased today to present you this webinar, which is the second of our CCIP Open House series. A little bit about CCDI or, uh, before we get started, if you're not familiar. So CCDI is a unique um, as unique in Canada, we're a charity that owns a consulting business that funnels any revenue back into the charity. So our main purpose is to provide services to our employer partners, and those employers who become employer partners benefit from things such as our networking and learning events in various cities across Canada, which we call communities of practice events. We also hold our annual on conference in the fall of each year, which is dedicated to a current topic in DNI. So in 2017, our conference focused on the intersectionality of diversity and wellness, for example. If you are an employer partner, all of your employees have access to our monthly webinars, available in both English and French. Employer partners also have access to that knowledge repository that I referenced. And then we also do our own original research and develop toolkits that are also available on our website, free for anyone. And beyond the benefits of becoming an employer partner, our consulting business provides a robust set of services that range from assessment and coaching, measurement and analytics, the learning and development department, and including e-learning modules on diversity and inclusion, unconscious bias, and managing bias in recruiting. And of course, we wouldn't be CCDI without the support of our founding partners who stepped up to help us get started in the first place. And we've nearly reached 200 employer partners, and we keep adding new partners every month. So the agenda for today's open house, 
While the agenda will review some of the same key points as the last CCIP Open House webinar, we would like to take this particular opportunity to focus on preparing for the CCIP exam. So we will talk about what it looks like once you register and what your options are as you begin to study. We'll also walk you through what to expect on exam day, and we will briefly cover considerations for the professional experience dossier as you think ahead to those requirements of the certification. So about the CCIP. It's a professional designation designed to assess the existing knowledge, skills, and experience of diversity and inclusion professionals against a set of 12 predefined competencies that were developed under the direction of a national advisory committee and through consultation with more than 200 diversity and inclusion leaders across Canada. Establishing a DNI professional standard through a designation ensures that DNI practitioners are meeting rigorous standards when presenting themselves as DNI professionals. As you can see on this slide, there is the list of the 12 competencies as well that have been included. So who are CCIP professionals? Well, they are inclusive leaders and global strategic thinkers passionate about developing inclusive workplaces. They provide subject matter expertise and st strategic support to internal and external stakeholders related to initiatives aimed at addressing issues of diversity, equity, and human rights in the workplace and promoting inclusion within organizations. And they operate within the mandates of established Canadian legislation related to employment equity, human rights, and accessibility to provide services that improve the quality of workplaces for all Canadians. So why might you get certified? In brief, once you're certified, DNI professionals acquire the right to use the designation Canadian Certified Inclusion Professional, or CCIP, and use that, uh, the initials after your name. In this way, CCIP designation enables you to obtain a formal and standardized acknowledgement of your knowledge, skills, and experience in the DNI field, thus effectively showing employers and clients the breadth and depth of your experience. And then another benefit of the CCIP designation is that the certified professional can also develop a competitive edge in a tough job market. We'd like to take the opportunity to um, note that Diversity and inclusion is not a regulated profession in Canada, so you're not required to have a license to work in this field. So as such, holding the CCIP designation is not a prerequisite for working in DNI. As outlined in our previous open house, the CCIP certification consists of seven steps. So I will not be going through each one in as much detail, but if you do have questions, please feel free to email the CCIP staff or consult the certification handbook found on our website, or you can check out our previous um, webinar open house series of the CCIP on the Knowledge Repository. So if you are eligible to enter the certification process, you would need to have three years of relevant diversity and inclusion work experience and at least two references, whether it be colleagues, supervisors, or clients, who can speak to your work experience in diversity and inclusion. Once you've assessed your eligibility, the next step is to complete the assessment of eligibility form and update your resume. So that's step two of preparing your documents. When both documents are ready, you can then proceed to step three, which is register online. Currently, registration is open until September 14th. Once your payment and documents are processed, you'll receive confirmation of whether you have successfully been registered as a CCIP candidate, and you'll receive the complimentary reading list. And then new this year is also online modules, known as our study guide, which we will discuss a little later. The majority of this open house today is going to focus on step four, which is the exam. So we're gonna explore both the preparation for the exam as well as what to expect on exam day itself. And for the next cohort of candidates, the next exam will be on October 16th. And then after successfully writing the CCIP exam, you'll prepare and submit a professional experience dossier. Once your submission has been approved by your external assessor, whom you have selected, then you become officially a CCIP. And you can use that acronym, like I said, in your signature. Your name will also be added to an online registry of CCIPs on the CCDI website. 
And then in order to maintain the certification, you do have to provide evidence of at least 20 hours of continuing professional development per year. So let's move through these steps a little bit. Like I said, I will be brief about some of the other areas and really focus on the exam itself today. And if you'd like to get um, a more robust understanding of the CCIP process, you can always check out that webinar that was pre-recorded in the Knowledge Repository. But today, let's just briefly look at uh, the eligibility. So I mentioned you need three years of relevant DNI work experience. Sample relevant tasks might include uh, developing or managing a DNI strategy, developing and delivering training or learning solutions on DNI topics, create or implement metrics to support DNI strategic planning. You may have worked with external stakeholders such as community partners or government bodies to support or promote the advancement of DNI goals and initiatives. Or perhaps you've conducted or presented research to support or advocate for DNI initiatives. So basically, relevant work experience is defined as any professional experience that helps candidates develop the competencies included in that CCIP competency framework that we started with. If you're not sure, you can always take a look at the eligibility checklist to verify whether you have what it takes to meet those certification requirements, which is found on our website under the related documents. And once you're ready to start preparing your documents, as I mentioned, if you believe you do meet the eligibility requirements, you can begin to prepare your, um, as the next part of your online registration two documents that will allow the CCIP staff to verify that you have acquired those necessary relevant work experience within the mandatory timelines. So do you have um, the eligibility form ready, as well as a resume that includes your job title, the name of the organization, the time of employment, and the job responsibilities that you did. And those things will really help the CCIP staff to truly understand your work experience and decide whether you're uh, you qualify. This is just a sample of how you might um, prepare your resume. So to help you in editing your resume, there's, um, you can also find help in the certification handbook. As you can see, there's an example here. There's a detailed description of the job responsibilities, as well as including that job title, the name of the organization, and the time of employment. It's really important in all of this that you're highlighting the things that you're doing in relation to the field of diversity and inclusion. So make sure that you've revised your resume and you've gone through it and you've really highlighted those skills and experience specifically. And then step three was when you're ready to do the registration online and you have those documents ready. There's just three simple steps. You provide your contact information, you provide those documents, and you pay the certification fee. So like I mentioned, registration is currently open until September 14th. And at that time, you can also purchase the new study guide that I referenced, which consists of seven online modules that will support the reading list and go through pertinent information that um, we feel is helpful for you to prepare for the exam. The registration looks like this when you get online. So as you'll see, there's four steps where you provide your information, you upload your documents, there's the payment step, and then you'll receive confirmation. If your payment has been successful, then you will receive a confirmation of payment email. And the CCIP staff will then review your documentation. If anything is incomplete, you'll be contacted and required to provide additional information. And then it is important to note that once you have enrolled, you are expected to complete the certification within two exam cycles. So if you need more information on that, we do invite you to take a look at the certification handbook, and it gives you an idea of what is, um, how long the exam cycles last. Basically, it would be required to finish by the next, like you would, if you didn't finish this particular um, time around, then you would have to complete the next time around. So let's take a look at exam preparation so that you feel ready. So the following are various ways that you can prepare yourself for the CCIP exam. And as I mentioned, the next cohort's exam is October 16th. 
So we would expect that you would review your previous experience, and you'll have done that a lot um, when you prepared your resume and your eligibility form. And then once you have um, your documents have been reviewed and the CCI, uh, CCIP staff confirms that you are eligible, then you will receive the reading list. And then to complement this reading list is the study guide that's available. So it's important to note that the CCIP certification is not an educational program. So educational programs themselves are designed to, prov designed to provide training and instruction to help participants acquire knowledge or skills. Certification programs such as the CCIP is designed to assess an individual's existing knowledge or skills. So we want you to truly reflect Reflect upon your experiences in the field of DNI, as you have for, I mentioned, your eligibility form. You'll also likely do this um, as you start to think about what you might be preparing for your professional experience dossier. We'll talk a little more about that a little later in this webinar. And just think about things such as what legislation you've encountered and enforced and what vocabulary you've become familiar with. And I think just going through those things, you'll start to realize how much you've truly encountered on the job. So as I mentioned, the reading list is something that you'll be provided once your uh, certification has been approved and that you become a CCIP candidate ready to begin this whole process. And now we get to the point where uh, I'd like to walk you through what our new study guide consists of. So the study guide is um, new this year. There are seven online modules that walk you through some pertinent information from the reading list. And these modules are accompanied by audio. They're self-navigated so that individuals can work through the material at their own pace. And uh, as they are, and you sort of go through it as you're ready to review that corresponding material from the reading list. All modules have an accessible version for those that wish to use a screen reader. And modules are also available in English and French. Access to the study guide is provided on CCDI's learning management system, which can be purchased online along with your registration payment or after registration if you, um, if you don't do it right away and you change your mind and you think you'd like it. We would like to take an opportunity now to provide you just a brief demo of what the study guide looks like so you get a better sense of what you'd be getting yourself into. So I will just take a moment here to um, stop sharing this screen. Okay, so when you log into CCDI's learning management system, it's going to look something like this. It says, welcome to the CCDI Learning Nexus. That's the name of our learning management system. And you will have been um, registered for our seven online modules as featured below. So I'll just take you into the first one so you can get a sense of, um, of what they're like. So I'll just click Launch. So it looks like this, and as I mentioned, there are audio buttons here. So if I click here, this give you a little sense of, um, of what it's like. Whoops, and I don't have the audio on. It's in preparing for the exam. I'll just start it again. Welcome to the Canadian Certified Inclusion Professional eLearning. This study guide is designed to support candidates in preparing for the exam. It consists of seven e-learning modules to complement the reading list and walk candidates through valuable information. Please navigate through the slides at your own pace. Look for audio buttons throughout and enjoy. So I'm just advancing through the slides myself now. Each module will cover one or more areas of the competency framework. The modules correspond with the structure and organization found on the reading list and have been categorized accordingly. 
Please note that Area 13 of the Competency Framework, Visionary and Strategic Leadership, is demonstrated in practice and, as such, is not addressed in the reading list or study guide. Each module will begin by outlining in red what areas of the competency framework will be covered in the module, as seen on the next slide. So here you can see the uh, areas that this particular module will focus on. And in the agenda, it reviews, uh, it, sorry, it, it outlines what we will review within this particular module. So in this one, this is the first one, this is discrimination that occurs in the hiring process, how some working environments and our practices might create barriers for people with mental health issues or episodic disabilities. We also review future labor market trends and how they may be addressed, as well as some diversity and inclusion strategies. So you can see that, I won't play the audio for all of them, but you can see um, the general idea. It just has you be able to walk yourself through this material, and all of this does correspond, as you can see the sources at the bottom, with various readings that have been included in the reading list. Okay. We'll just come back into the, um, the webinar now, and I do invite questions at the end of the webinar if, uh, if you do have further questions for me. So exam completion, the actual um, what to expect. So the CCIP exam is uh, delivered online. It is a multiple choice examination of approximately 100 questions, and it will test your knowledge with respect to those uh, 12 areas of the CCIP competency framework. Prior to exam day, you will receive an email with the following information. So it'll confirm the exam date and the hours of avail that are available for completion. And so we make ourselves available for you to complete the exam anywhere between the hours of 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on October 16th. And the reason for this is that we also have um, IT support throughout that time. Um, just to prepare yourself, we do recommend that you check your own IT um, requirements, so make sure that you have access to um, a reliable laptop or desktop computer, as well as internet and an updated browser. And from the moment that you start the exam, you will have a maximum of three hours to complete it. The clock starts and it just counts continuously. Um, you'll have plenty of time. Um, that's, that's, uh, the exam does not take you the full three hours, um, but you do have the three hours if you need it. Um, but it should be noted that you should make, have to make sure you do start the exam no later than 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time so that you give yourself that full three hours if you'd like it. As I mentioned, um, since our IT support does close at 7 p.m. And so the actual day of the exam, everyone writes on that same day as I mentioned because that ensures all day we can provide you tech support via phone or email and we can monitor the exam platform, make sure there are no issues. You can write at any point during the day within those hours of operation. And um, from the moment that you start the exam, I mentioned you do have those three hours. The exam interface itself looks a little bit like this. So there is the um, bookmark that you can use to remind yourself to come back to a question, which is at the top left there. There's also uh, notes that you can open, a spot to the right of the question for you to uh, write your thoughts if you need to come back to a question later. And that's the, um, the little icon. I know it's a little difficult to see, but it's the, the second in from the left. And then right next to that, the third in from the left, the clock, which allows you to show the time left, or you can hide it if that's not something that you want to see. Um, and so I mentioned that clock will run continuously once you start the exam, uh, and that's essentially because it is a, a take-home exam. The submit button 
is in the top right corner. And then the bar that runs along the top, um, that shows all the exam questions, whether they're just bookmarked or unanswered. It will just keep track of all of the ones that you have left. And they are all multiple choice, so you can see below that it just gives you the, the question with your responses below. So it's a fairly clean interface. And then when you're ready to submit, you will be immediately notified of your exam results following the exam. So if you pass, you'll be able to move on to that subsequent step of the certification process, which is starting to um, begin the, the professional experience dossier portion of the uh, certification. If you do fail, the, um, then the CCIP staff will provide you with directions on how to retake the exam, um, or you may be invited to, um, to review um, if you'd like to set up a consultation to review the exam itself. You'll also receive an email confirmation including those next steps. So I'd like to move on now to the professional experience dossier. So we seem to get a lot of questions about um, things to be mindful of with this experience. So first of all, the I'm just going to call it PED for short. It's a form where candidates are required to provide essay examples of practical work situations where they've demonstrated those competencies that are included in the 12 areas of the CCIP competency framework as indicated here. Now these areas uh, of the competence have been divided into primary and secondary areas as you can see. Uh, each of them have different maximum scores. So the combination ensures that that breadth and depth of knowledge are demonstrated through the CCIP that, that you've just demonstrated in the CCIP exam um, is now compl complemented uh, in, in the PED. So the CCIP candidates, they're not expected to demonstrate experience in all 12 areas. Basically to become certified, candidates must obtain a, uh, a total score of 50 points. So primary areas, you need a minimum score of 40 points. And then the second, secondary areas, you need a minimum score of 10 points. So altogether, that total of 50. So we recommend uh, it's sensible to write essays that can get you a maximum score that's actually higher than that 40 points and that 10 points, just to ensure that, uh, that you make sure that you, you pass that portion of the certification. If you're looking for more information as to where to find it, this is also on our website under Related Documents, and you'll see the Professional Experience Dossier Submission Form. And it looks like this. It's a space where you can write the essay with a recommended limit, word limit of um, 500 words. And below, there's a section reserved for the external assessor's evaluation. And we highly recommend each essay should be different. And then once you've completed that PED submission form, you would click the Submit button at the end. And if you'd like a copy for your own records, make sure that you do save it before clicking the Submit button. And the CCIP staff will forward it on to your elected external assessor for review and validation. So a little bit about that external assessor. They are somebody that's going to be nominated by you, the candidate, in the PED form. This is somebody who will review and validate your essays and provide a leadership assessment. They should have a good general understanding of the DNI space. They should also have direct knowledge of you as the candidate and your DNI work experience, as well as direct or indirect knowledge of your roles and experiences that you may have referenced in the PED submission. You need to make sure that they're not a complete conflict of interest. So in other words, you don't want it to be your direct um, supervisor. And should you have, um, they should really, you should take into account the time that they have available for the review and assessment. We also recommend that an alternative external assessor should also be notified in the event that the, the first um, person that you select is unable to complete it for some reason or, um, you know, something comes up and they're struggling with the, with the timelines. It's just advisable to have uh, another person that you've already let 
um, notified that, that you might need to turn to them uh, in the event of that situation. So in each of your essays, you're going to want to provide an example of practical work situations where you applied or demonstrated the skills and those competencies in the area that, uh, that I, we've just reviewed. As such, we suggest that you're reviewing those competencies included in each of those areas before you write your essay. And then in the essay itself, you want to provide the following kind of information. So a situational context where the circumstances or standard operational um, sorry, were the circumstances standard or operational or non-standard? Tell us a little bit about the situation, whether it was high stake or low stake. Provide detailed and practical description of what you did, the skills and abilities that you demonstrated. What were the indicators of your success in that situation? And then who else maybe was involved and in which capacity? We recommend you keep those essays as concise as possible. The recommended length is 500 words and you'll not be penalized for writing an essay that's longer than 500 words, but we want you to be mindful of the fact that this could create additional work for your external assessor. So it's just come to my attention that apparently we've experienced technical difficulties and that perhaps the screen hasn't been available throughout. My apologies. As I mentioned, we have recorded this entire webinar. So if you do wish to go back and review the, the slides that were accompanying um, what I'm saying, then we invite you to email us and we will definitely make sure that you have access to that knowledge repository and the recording. So the professional experience dossier, the results, basically the score that is provided by the external assessor meets, um, if you've met the passing score of the 50 points, and the leadership assessment as well is positive, then you can become an eligible to become certified and receive an official notification of certification from CCIP staff. And uh, the second option then is that the score provided by the external assessor does not meet the required passing score of 50 points, or if your leadership assessment is negative, then you'll simply be asked to resubmit the PED with the subsequent exam cycle that I mentioned. And in, in that case, a resubmission fee does apply. And so certification and maintenance. Once you're officially a CCIP, you'll receive an official notification of certification from CCIP staff, and you'll become a CCIP, um, you'll become Canadian Certified Inclusional Professional. And you can use that acronym in your signature. Your name is added to an online national registry. And the registry allows employers to verify your credentials um, of the candidates for employment also enables CCIP professionals to showcase your expertise as recognized by a knowledgeable third-party entity. And as I mentioned, there is ongoing um, professional development that's required to maintain your certification. And so any professionals that um, don't maintain that ongoing professional development, then the CCIP um, credential will be removed from the registry. Um, but you're, uh, you're welcome to, to, um, to contact us if, if that's the case and then we'll make sure that you, uh, you can maintain your professional development moving forward. And so basically what that consists of sorry, um, is 20 hours of continued professional development each year. So uh, after that first year of certification, there is a, a form that, uh, that we ask, then we invite you to, to fill out. So for example, if you receive your certification between January 1st and December 31st, 2018. This, this CPD cycle will start on January 1st, 2019, and then you'll be required to submit evidence of completion of 20 CPD hours by December 31st of 2019. So that form that I mentioned is available on our website. It's just called the Pro Continued Professional Development Activity Log. 
and along with your payment of the CPD um, submission fee, then you uh, then once you've provided those documents, then we're able to review. The activity log itself looks a little like this. There's the space to, uh, provided once again. Uh, in this instance, the, um, the activity you're describing, we, we recommend just keeping it um, under 300 words. So as you can see, it's just a brief description of the kinds of things that you're doing to continue your professional development in the field of diversity and inclusion. Okay, so I've at, I'm at the point where I do invite questions. I am very curious to know if um, my screen was visible when I was showing you our study guide. If it's not, I'm happy to take you back through. Um, or if you have any other questions for me at this time, I invite you to write in the chat box. And please keep in mind that only uh, myself and our IT assistant will be able to um, see those questions. Would somebody who's on the line be able to just let me know, were you able to view the um, study guide demo? Just a simple yes or no would be great so I know whether I need to, uh, to show that again. So I'm not getting any response from individuals. Can everyone hear me OK? I'll take that as a yes. And like I mentioned, everything has been recorded, so um, we will send out that link. Um, and if you if you don't receive that, or if you would like to,
Thank you. We hope you enjoyed today's webinar. For more information on upcoming events, please visit our website at ccdi.ca.